Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For this tutorial, we're doing another fashion inspired cake. I found that gorgeous dress online and I decided to do the best I can do at making it edible. Now it's not exact, but it's as close as I could get. So let's get right to it. And for this cake, I'm doing, what did I do? Five layers, five or six, no, I think it was six layers. We'll see in a second of my white almond vanilla cake filled with my crusting American buttercream. Now, when you're doing a tall, tall cake like this, you can go at it two ways. You could put some support in the middle using a cake board and some straws halfway up and then building from there. That would be the smartest way to do it, especially if, this, if you're doing this for an order. But for my purposes today, I'm going to be carving it so I know some of the bulk is going to go away. So instead of using the board and the straws, I'm using some skewers to hold it in place. And I did a thin layer of buttercream so that it doesn't squish out the sides, and I set it to chill right away. Now to make, what should we call these fabric petals? I'm using this flower forming tray by Wilton and some gum paste. Now I'm just rolling out the gum paste fairly thin um, to almost to the point where you can see the pattern of the table underneath about maybe a little less than an eighth of an inch thickness. And then I'm also using this flower petal um, tool. You use this when you cut your gum paste flowers to put your gum paste in there before you work with them to keep them from drying out. And that's what I did with these petals as I was cutting them out. Now you can see some scraps on the side there. I did make them a little bit smaller. They're a little bit too wide. And set those aside to dry. Probably overnight is best for that. Now when it comes to carving, I made myself a template because I wanted to go with the shape of the body, you know, the curvature of the waistline. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to do both sides, but I, and I did decide to do both sides. I kind of at first thought I was going to go with just that texture on the side where, or the shape on the side where the pleating was in the picture. But I went ahead and did both sides. You can't even see it on the left-hand side when it's done because that's where the, the fabric petals are. But that's okay. It doesn't really matter. So I put that template on it, like what would be the front. And then I marked where I was going to carve it out. And then I flipped it over. You can see it. I'm showing you on this side. This is the mirror image on the other side. And I'm just using it as a template. Put it on one side put it on the other side, flip it, put it on the other side, and make your markings on both sides. And then you just kind of carve in between them, trying to make it a soft um, carving. I didn't want sharp lines. I want, because you know, bodies are not, don't have sharp lines. They have soft curves. So I'm just kind of softening it as I go. When it comes to carving, taking little bits is better than taking too much. You can always go back in and take more. I also carved out some in the front that would go underneath the bust, you know, just kind of um, a waistline all the way around the front anyways. The back I left fairly flat because that's the back. You know, it didn't, I wasn't trying to mimic the shape of a body. I was just trying to kind of give it the optical illusion of some curves to make it look more like the actual dress. You don't have to. You could do the same design without the carving, and I think it would look just as good. I did a thin coat of buttercream on there and put it in the refrigerator to chill. Now I'm going to make some homemade isomalt gems. If you look close at the picture of the actual dress, they are actual jewels. Like, um, how do you say it, Swarovski crystals, and, and um, they're kind of like, what do you call it, like strings of these um, gems, which I don't have. That's not edible, so I didn't. I wanted to make this whole cake edible. So I do have these gem molds, and I'm using isomalt. This is the isomelts. Uh, there's no water needed. You just put them in the microwave and melt them down. Follow the directions on the package. It's a lot faster. You don't have to worry about getting it to temperature. They're a little bit on, more on the pricey side, but if time is an issue, I would go with the ISO melts. And then once they dried, which is very quick, and they're a little bit tacky, and where I'm at, it was very humid anyway, but you want to make, if it's not humid where you are, if you leave them at room temp for 
maybe an hour or so. They get kind of tacky on their own. And this edible silver leaf sticks right to the back. If you want gems, when the whole trend started, when everything was bejeweled when it came to cakes, the problem everybody seemed to have was that if a gem made out of isomalt is just clear, you're not going to get a reflection out of them. They're just going to kind of blend into the whiteness of the cake. So what I discovered back then was if you back them with silver, that's what gems actually are, the non-edible kind. They have silver in the back, and that's what helps reflect the light. So if you add the edible silver to the back of your gems, you've got that reflection in the background. So I just set those aside, and now I am finishing off those fabric petals. I just cut them in long strips. These are going to go along the side of the petals. And this is where I'm going to stick. I just used some uh, silver, what do you call them? Silver um, sugar crystals. I did want to do the gems on these two. But uh, let's be honest, I did not have the time or um, enough of the ISO melts to do that. It would look really great. It really would. But this cake took me two days as it was. So we're going to go with the look of the dress, using it as an inspiration instead of it has to look exactly like it. And I think these sugar crystals did the job. I just lined them along the outside. I attached them with some piping gel. These, you would not want to leave them to sit. They're a little bit loosey-goosey and um, soft. But if you want them to shape to the angle around the edge of these petals, they still have to be soft. Otherwise, they're going to crack. So you do, unfortunately, have to work with them in a soft state. Um, and this is what they all look like. And now I'm that now that the cake is chilled, I'm going back in and I'm doing a thicker layer of buttercream. This is going to be coated with or covered with fondant, but I like to add a little bit more buttercream. And I did use my Flexi Smoother to help smooth into where the shape of the bodice was. And now that these are all dried and set up, I used some of the confectioner's glaze to add a final shine to the top of these gems and to seal them. Otherwise, they get a little cloudy. And sometimes, even with using the confectioner's glaze, if it's really humid out and they have to sit for a while, sometimes they can still get a little bit cloudy. A little trick to help with that is use just brush on some vegetable oil. That takes that away. Little little hint that I kind of figured out as I went. And now we're just covering our cake with the fondant. I used the, um, I didn't want to drape it because of all, ah, it, the weight of the height of this cake, when that fondant were to drape down, you would have a lot of stretching and pulling. And to be honest, the fondant I bought for this cake is not the best. I don't know if I should say where I got it from. I wouldn't suggest. It's a store that starts has two words, and both the first one starts with an H. The second word starts with an L, <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. I would not buy the fondant from there. Um, it's just, it has a weird texture to it, and it definitely likes to rip. So even adding shortening to it, don't use it. Stick with a satin ice or homemade marshmallow fondant would be my suggestions on that, especially when you're dealing with a carved cake because you need to manipulate it, manipulate it some, and this was a nightmare. I did get it to work, but anyway, enough of that. You know what I'm saying. And then I just used a wadded up piece of fondant to help push that fondant and smooth it, get rid of any finger marks there might be. And where the carved section is there, too, I meant to say before I get to this part here. Um, if you have air bubbles that form underneath there, because that can happen, um, just pop it with a, with a pin and let your air out that way. Now that our petals are dried and firm, um, I'm just attaching them with some buttercream is all I'm using. A little bit of buttercream in the, on the back of these. And then I'm securing them with some toothpicks. To hold them in place until everything is set up. I would not, I repeat, would not suggest attaching these with piping gel. They are too heavy. Uh, they will just slide down the cake. 
Just stick with buttercream and toothpicks. Or royal icing would work too. Or even a little bit of melted chocolate. Just not the piping gel for this situation. And I needed a template for the piece that I'm putting the gems on. I wanted to attach the fabric petals first and then attach the gems. I thought about this long and hard. You could attach them directly to the fondant there, but I wanted a little bit more control over where I was placing them. And I find it easier to place things when it is on the tabletop. So again, this is a time when a better fondant would have been a better idea because I did have some trouble transferring this onto the cake. A better fondant wouldn't give you so much of a problem. So I cut the shape out. I just kind of marked with a pencil on the uh, piece of parchment paper, the general shape. And then I rolled out my fondant and I stuck some piping gel onto the fondant. I just brushed it on there. And then I'm attaching my silver edible leaf on top of that. The reason I did the edible leaf on this piece and on the back of the gems, instead of just putting it on the back or on the fondant like this, is because I needed to attach the gems with some buttercream. And if I hadn't put the silver on the back of the gems also, you would see the buttercream underneath. So I had to do both of them with the edible silver leaf. And then I added some... Uh, just some of the silver sugar crystals and some rock candy, a little bit in there too. Like I said, this is not completely replicating the gems. This is the idea of it. And I'm just pressing them in real good. And I did set that aside to dry or to, to firm up for a while because this fondant is such crap. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. Um, I knew that there's no way I was going to, transport it back on to here so you can see it rip there if I hadn't let it set up for a little bit and I just put a cake board one of those plastic cake boards underneath it to help me lift it up there and then I'm just manipulating it doing the best I can to not let it rip and tear too much and to get it attached I knew that it was going to tuck and underneath or behind these bottom ones and then lay on top a little bit on top of the top ones I did take the picture. I kind of tried to tear it up or break it down, the actual dress, and it looked like that's kind of how they did the fabric there. So I just used some more of those gems to hide, blend in where the fondant was not tucked up underneath the top petals. That's not exactly, you don't have to do it exactly that way, guys. If you try this, do it however works best for you when it comes to that. That's just the way that it worked for me that day. Now I'm using some long dowels here and I'm making my pleats by rolling out my fondant and then placing it on top of the skewers. I had put some dust, some cornstarch on top of those so that I could remove them and just use your fingers to push that fondant in between them and then remove your skewers. And there you have a pleat. Gather it at the top there. And then I had brushed some, some shortening on the cake to get it to stick. Again, rustling with awful fondant and just I stuck some buttercream behind it where I needed it to tuck in to get it to tuck in there so this is my final product I know this video was a little bit longer and there was a lot to tell you about but I hope you liked it hope you give it a try and we'll catch you on the next one